Now, in terms of the 30% of public procurement funds that are going to be given access to SMMEs as well as cooperatives, what are the timeframes for this to be unlocked and how do we ensure that those, those funds aren't used incorrectly or, or for, you know, for businesses that are, have good connections to government and, and you know, for corruption, those kind of issues? How do we prevent that and, and what, are the, what is the time frame for, for when those funds will be unlocked or those opportunities will be unlocked? Firstly, we need to make sure that uh, Treasury signs uh, uh, the, the, the practice note that would enable uh, uh, government and ourselves to use that to make sure that all the different government departments adhere to that because it's about accessing opportunities for small and medium enterprises, whether um, in service. Uh, and so what we will do is to ensure that the, the, the kind of uh, businesses that access this through either CIFA or CEDA, there must be a way of ensuring that people who ask, well, it's really, it's not more, it's, it's not even about who is going to be able to access and how we are going to judge who accesses. It's every business person who has a very concrete plan, who, who can prove and show that their plan has got a capacity for growth because we want value for money at the same time. But the 30%, uh, in our view is important because many small businesses do not have access to markets and we think that almost all government departments can be uh, an access to market. Let me just make a simple example. Where do government get stationary? From who does government access stationary? We're saying that government must then be able to look at smaller businesses that can be able to supply stationary. Okay, so it's, it's all very well for these increases in procurements, but when government doesn't pay in 30 days, that's a problem for business. What is happening to change that? Remember yesterday I said that's our, one of our worst nightmares because we believe that uh, unless businesses are paid, it's, it's, a, it's a recipe for them to collapse. So the government has identified this as one of the biggest problems. And it's unfortunate that it's the very same government that is not paying when, it, when people are supposed to be paid. Firstly, let's start with, we have to make sure that those that are doing business with government have got all their invoices and everything about them must be correct. Because some instances, people complain about the fact that they are not being paid only to find that their submissions are also not in order. So we need to be able to assist those businesses that have got contracts with government to make sure that's in order, including their taxes and all. But on the side of government, we have to make sure that the people that are sitting behind the desk who have to process those things, understand what it means when you don't pay a business. When you don't pay a business, it means they can't pay salaries. When they can't pay salaries, it means they can't even go and buy, uh, make orders for whatever they're producing. It's about the consciousness of the civil servants that sit behind in them having that understanding. But I think what is also important is if they don't pay, what do we do about that? We need to make sure that accountability through government processes, which is one of the most difficult things, unnecessarily so. Are there concrete plans for this to happen? Absolutely. But remember yesterday I did say that in the office of the president itself, under Minister uh, Jeff Khadebe on monitoring and evaluation, they started a system already to make sure that that happens. So we have to work together with them. But it's not about just the two departments. It's about us ensuring that all the departments uh, are held accountable as far as that is concerned.